Hey, thanks for stopping by Tony's Cool Tools. Today I thought I'd show you a new tool that I came across and I thought it would be interesting. Might save us some time, but we don't know. We'll find out together. Let me give you a scenario here. You're in the woods cutting and you either have one saw or you have two saws, let's just say. And you go ahead and you're cutting and you happen to hit either a piece of metal in the wood or you hit a rock and you dull that chain. So you have a couple options. A, you go to your second saw. That's the easiest. And if you're like many of you viewers, I know you only have one chainsaw. And a lot of times you bring a spare chain with you. Or you have your sharpening gear with you and you can sharpen that chain right on the bar. But let's just say that the metal or rock really trashed your chain. So now you got to replace it. So you finish your cutting job that day and you're back at your house, garage or shop and you figure you're gonna go ahead and sharpen the chains, both of them. You put your chainsaw in your sharpening vise and you go ahead and start sharpening the first chain. But after that, you have to remove that chain off the chainsaw and put the second one on. That takes some time. And that's where this comes in, the Forrester chainsaw vise. For those of you who follow my channel, you saw the review I did on chainsaw vices. And you can find that information right below. I put a link to it in the info section. And this one is in addition to the other ones that I have. Because the other ones don't do what this can. As I said in my video before, this is by far my most favorite sharpening device or holder. And I showed you Chris from In the Woodyard and Kenny, his brother, made this one here. Very simple. This is probably around $75 for the pair. This right here, if you have a piece of metal and you know somebody that can weld a C-clamp on it, you could probably get it for under $10. Now, once you have the saw mounted on the stand, you have multiple options. You can either do a filing by hand, you can use the two-in-one, or my favorite tool, the rotary or Dremel tool with an abrasive stone on it. Goes very quickly. Now, the nice thing about this sharpening station is I can work on it from either side, from left or right. Naturally, I can only use this saw holder when I have a chainsaw that has the bar mounted on it and the chain on top of that. Otherwise, I can't do anything. And let me show you how you can sharpen your chain without having the engine or the bar on this. So if you have a second chain that you have to sharpen and it's not on the engine or not on the chainsaw, let me show you how you can do that. So this next method may save you some time if you have some extra chains that are not mounted on your saw. Now, when I purchased the Forrester chainsaw vise, it came in a box like this, totally disassembled. But there's only a few pieces, as you can see here. Two pieces of angle iron, two cam locks, and a bar. Very similar to your chainsaw bar. And the groove on the Forrester bar will accommodate multiple different gauge sizes, such as 43, 50, 58, and 63. I don't think it'll do a 404 for sure, because I don't think that's wide enough. But the drive link just fits inside here and is tightened up with the cam screws, and we'll see how that works. One additional thing to mention is this bar is 17 and a half inches long. So I have an 18 inch bar and chain here, and this fits on, as you can see from the chain, with no problem at all. But I don't know if anything smaller would be able to fit in here because it won't rotate on either side. And as far as the cam arm goes, you have one nut to tighten it up, one nut that used as a spacer, and one washer. And that's it. Oh, and I forgot to mention, it does come with instructions. But if you're Chris from In the Woodyard, you just throw these away and don't look at them anyway, so. Now, once you have the unit assembled, this is what it should look like. Two cam arms that open up. And as you cam these down, it tightens up the bar groove. Let's see how good it does. Now, without a doubt, the easiest way to mount this is in your vise. There are two bolt holes right here that you can mount it on a 2x12 or 2x8 and then have it portable. But this is one of the best ways of doing it. I'll show you another way here shortly. This chain is from my MS261. It's a 0.325 and it's a 0.63 gauge. And as you can see, it just rolls right back in that groove. When you're ready to sharpen, you just take the cam and lock it in on both sides and it doesn't move. So now you can grab any of your files, 
your two-in-one or your rotary tool. Now you can position yourself on either left or right side of the jig and start sharpening. I prefer sharpening all teeth in one direction, one side and then do the other. Some people can go back and forth, I'm not one of them. And you will have to play around with this adjustment here to get it to the right cam tensioning. Once you do that, it's set for that specific chain. And then you can just grab your file and go to work. And I also found out after you mark your initial tooth for your beginning, you have approximately five teeth that you can sharpen here before you have to rotate it. And once you rotate it, you loosen this up, grab the tooth that you have, bring it all the way down to almost the turn, and then put this on and it's locked in. Pretty good. I switch now to a more portable vise, and that is my jaw horse. It works real good, it clamps in real nice, but I also switch to my 25 inch chain, which is 3 8 50 gauge. And I had to make adjustments on the nuts, and what I found is it's not so easy. Every time I'd make an adjustment, it would tighten up and work pretty good like now. And if I move this, I can tighten it up and it's not holding. So I have to keep playing around and retightening it. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Now, as you can see, it did lock in. Let's try it one more time. Loosen the clamp up, move my chain over, tighten it up, and that works this time. And in my opinion, all you should be able to do is cam this over, lock it in, and now it's loose again. But if I put a lot of pressure on it, it does work. So it does work, but well, I was a little disappointed after testing this saw vise. It works great on a 3.2563 gauge, but when I switch to the 3850 gauge, it just doesn't tighten up each and every time. It does work, don't get me wrong, it does work, but you gotta play around with it quite a bit. And I did check the Amazon rating, and it only got a 3.6 out of 5. After reading the reviews, many people found the same results that I did in it. It would work most of the time, but not all the time. But for a tool like this under $30, I will play around with it a little bit more to see if I can get it to work. And I'm not sponsored by Forrester, nor do I get the product for free. I did pay for it, and I bought it on Amazon. Well, as I've said before, I give you my honest and unbiased opinion. Some tools make it, some tools don't. So I hope you found this video informative, and if so, please like, share, and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up as well, and remember, Pass it forward. Make the world a better place. And don't be a tool. Watch Tony's Cool Tool. Until I see you next time, have a great day.